I know I was born for it. And so when my heart and my soul became so restless at corporate America and then having my my sister in my ear speaking positively to me, telling me my destiny is tied to my business, it all came full, for, full force, full fruition and Lighthouse was born. So don't give up on your childhood journey. Don't give up on your childhood memories. It can be the very thing that you've been meant to do with your life. Mm. Nothing is wasted. The pain is not wasted. The tears aren't wasted. The setbacks aren't wasted. It's a preparation for your destiny now. <laughs> Welcome, my loves. Welcome, Doves of Life. You are invited to a delicious Rebel for a Spell podcast, where we are featuring, as I promised, honey, I promised, <laughs> we are featuring powerful women who have defied the odds. Powerful women like you, gorgeous soul, who are creating the destination of their joy every day. How? By living life on their terms, on their terms today. <laughs> it is my deep honor and privilege to feature Sharon Huggins. Sharon Huggins, I've been dropping her name all over social media, baby. Thank you, <laughs> she, sister. You're welcome. She is the founder of Lighthouse Restoration Home, Inc., my love. Lighthouse Restoration Home, Inc. Sharon's going to drop some dimes for us, but I wanted to give you a little taste, a little background of Sharon. Okay, Sharon is an intellectual was in the corporate world for many years. Stockbroker, you ever heard of the Series 7? Very difficult. She passed this exam. She's doing all the things that you and I have been told to do so that we can succeed, so that we can have all these things that we want. The white picket fence, the money to travel, the money to do all the things we've ever wanted to do. And Sharon Huggins from the island of St. Kitts in the Northeastern Caribbean, where I am Ooh. from. <laughs> she decided, hells to the no. Hells to the no. I'm going to follow my mission, my calling. And that's why Sharon is here as an example for you and me, many of us, my loves, regardless of where you are from, regardless of the color of your skin, your white, purple, your yellow, your orange, your brown. So you, you, you belong here. This is your home. Sharon is an example of a woman who decided to trust something other than them, something other than the conditions that maybe somebody said she needed to follow in order to be happy, joyful, prosperous, successful. Sharon Huggins, welcome. <laughs> welcome to the Rebel for a Spell podcast, my love. Thank you, my dear, for having me. I am very privileged to be here, and I'm yes. very grateful. Thank Wonderful. you. Wonderful. I'm so happy to have you here. Sharon, we start this delicious woman, powerful woman series <laughs> by dream casting. That's what we do. Because sometimes, Good. until we, you and I, women, gorgeous souls listening, welcome, welcome in here. Go get your cup of coffee. It's going to be delicious. Go get your little munch, your munch. <laughs> sometimes you and I have to have to curate, create, have to summon, let's call the word, summon the right. feelings, the emotions, the imagining of the life we want to have before it shows up in yep. our everyday reality, in our everyday reality. So Sharon, today we're kicking it off with the dream casting, darling. Dream right, with me. Go. Dream with me. My let's question go. for you is this, and take as long as you need to share with us. Okay. What does joy feel like to you? Well, first of all, there is no right or wrong way for being happy. You don't have a script you need to follow. You can't wait for anyone else to bring you joy. You have to perceive it in your mind's eye and let it transform into your mind, your body, and your soul. Yes, there are days and times when we are going to get up and we have to work on becoming joyful. But it's your joy, so work on it. Mm -hmm. Basically, I don't wait for anyone to give me accreditation, to tell me I'm beautiful, to tell me I look lovely, or anything like that. It's within you. You have to find it. And the way to find it is to believe in yourself, dig deep in your soul. 
and realize that you are your own power source. You're your own joy source. If you don't believe that, then you won't have that joy. You won't have that happiness. And you'll always be blaming somebody else. So dig deep within yourself. That joy is there. Amen. The joy of the Lord is your strength. So once you have that joy in you, you're a powerful, strong, mighty woman and man. But this is our women. We are bigging up right now. So we are focusing on the woman. So thank you, Sharon. Dig thank you. Within. Dig deep within. Thank you, Sharon. And my loves, please know she's sharing that message purely from her soul to yours, as we do here. And I'll say it now and forever and evermore. Welcome home, women. This is a safe space for you and me and you and me and Sharon and people in your neighborhoods to be seen, heard, acknowledged and respected and to dream of all our possibilities. Sharon, question for you, my loves. Yes. You you left corporate life. Some people may say, if I may share this, let's talk playing because yes, I came I from the corporate space as well. Let's talk playing, okay? Security job security is a thing that yeah. we all Crave. Let's just tell the truth because I don't know about the rest of you, darlings, but I believe money is a neutral resource that is available is. to everybody. And it I've is. been poured down and out, honey, counting pasta shells so I could cook yeah. pasta a day. Ooh. We've all been there. Right here. Jared's been there. <laughs> you may have been there too. Maybe you've not have been there, but I believe just like oxygen, just like love, money is a neutral natural way for us to support ourselves. Oh, so Sharon, you abandoned what some may say is a secure life of having that monthly paycheck, whatever commissions on the deals and the trades, and you left that and you followed your calling. What was the impetus? Why, what was pulling you forward into this life of being the founder of the Lighthouse Restoration Home, Inc.? Well, do you sometimes your soul becomes restless. Even though I had the degree in finance and investments and I worked in that capacity for several years, both in New York and then when I moved to Florida, but my soul was still searching for something. And that's something at the time, I didn't know what it was, but I know that my soul was searching. After a while, I wasn't happy going into that corporate job. It wasn't fulfilling me. And so I made up my mind. It took about a year for me to actually walk out the door, but I made up my mind in one full year that I had to leave and I had to seek and find out why my soul was restless. I finally left, scared, yes. What are my next steps going to be? How am I going to support myself and my family? But you can't let that stop you. Where there is a will, where you have that drive, there will be a way. You will find your way because I firmly believe where God plants you is where he's going to prosper you, where he's going to flourish you. And so that was my mantra. God plants me here. He's given me this restless soul syndrome for a reason, and he's going to prosper me. So I walked out of that door. I started a daycare home business. And my church sister would always say to me, Sharon, your destiny and your calling is tied to your business. And I would be saying, what is this woman talking about? I don't know. But she would never reveal what she said. I keep asking. And she was like, you'll figure it out. You'll know it. You'll know it. And a couple of years into um, my business going, my daycare business going, I've witnessed several trauma that women go through. I've had one parent. When I saw her, all of her front teeth were punched out by her significant other. That same week, a grandma came to pick up her grandchildren and told me the sad, heartbreaking story that they found their mom OD'd and she's dead. Mm. And several other incidents took place. And so I was laying in my bed one night and my heart just kept saying, you have to do this nonprofit. And I jumped up and I said, Lord, but I don't know anything about a nonprofit. What is this? You know, and I kept processing it. it. This restlessness would not leave me. And so I know it was my calling. I know it was from God. And so 
I started the process of researching. I met many stumbling blocks of how to become a nonprofit organization with a 501c3. There were so many stumbling blocks. The funds weren't there, but I made a way. God made a way. Resources came. I applied for it, paid the fees, and the rest is history. Lighthouse was born. And basically, I found out what my church sister was saying to me, all the different abuse that I saw the women going through as they were my, my clients, my parents for my children. My soul eventually became rested. Oh. I still have a lot of work to do, but my soul is rested. It's in the right place. It's in the oh. place that God wants it to be. Ah, Sharon, thank you for walking us through your clarity bridge, your transformation. I'd like to add this. Listeners out there, here's what I know. Here's what I know. Here's what I know. And my heart goes out to the kids. I'm feeling all the feelings, activations in my body right now as a trauma survivor. Right now as hearing these stories from Sharon. I'm really focusing not to let tears interrupt the deliciousness because it's not tears of pain, my listeners, my lovely souls. It's pain of joy. To know that this is what I heard when Sharon just spoke, okay? Listen in deeply and closely. Turn up the volume wherever you are to get all the nuggets that Sharon is sharing and we are sharing together. I believe Sharon has said it too. The desires of your heart, the callings and nuggets, the whispers that you hear, that you feel, Feel the twinges, the, the, the pulsing of your thigh, your, 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 your calves, your, your, your hair on your head springing up, however it manifests in your body. Your desires, I believe, I believe are, and Sharon said as much too, are, these are your divine guides from the source of all things. Listen, you don't have to be religious, spiritual. You don't have to believe in any of this. What some people believe in God, Allah, Buddha, whatever version of the manifestation of source of life, of creation is. All you've got to know is there's something inside of you that's coming through as a message. The desires you have are legitimate, are valid. They are who you were meant to be. Who you were meant to be. And so Sharon found that trust in her in her intuitive whispers from her divine source. So sometimes we wonder how, like Sharon just said, how is this going to happen? How are we going to happen? Show me the how. Show me the proof. Show me the results before I believe in myself, believe in the messages I'm getting so that I can move and move and move and move forward. And Sharon just showed us she didn't know how, but she was listening and trusting some way, somehow, the lady in her church came to her and gave her this deposit, deposited an idea that Sharon already felt that was being birthed, but it didn't have a name. It didn't have a name called Lighthouse Restoration Home, but eventually it came through and Sharon trusted it from her bed, trusted it. My loves, if you want to hear about the transformation in real time, Sharon just gave it. You don't have to know how. Sometimes our brain wants to focus on, show me the proof before I do the action. It doesn't work like that, my love. First, it's got to be seeded, seeded, rooted, rooted exactly. inside of you that it flourishes, flourishes. And Sharon, you're doing some work every day that many, many yes. people may be intimidated by. Many, many oh, people yeah. have to find a way to almost reconfigure joy inside of themselves on some days when they witness trauma like you have encountered with your clients. So let me ask you this personally, Sharon, let's go yes. into all about Sharon. Now you give everybody yes. all your joy. How does Sharon nourish, nourish her spirit outside of work? I know you're married and her husband yes. is arm. If I may say quite a handsome somebody. <laughs> He's also an entrepreneur. I've known Sharon for many years, many years. Yes. She's, yes. she's one powerful woman that has been a mentor, if I'm honest here. We all have mentors Thank in my head, sisters in my heart. Sharon is a mother of two and a husband who supports So I know on that side. But how does Sharon support Sharon emotionally, spiritually, energetically? How do you support yourself in the face of all these challenges that you may have? Well, first of all, I'm Christian, so I tap into my source, which is my Lord Jesus Christ and Savior. So for my replenishment, I always do my praise. I sometimes I'm in my bedroom doing my praise dance and singing my gospel songs to the top of my lungs with all my might. 
Okay. And she can sing, honey. She can sing. (laughs) With all my might. But believe it or not, people may think that it's pouring out energy. But at the end of that worship, you feel renewed, energized. You feel like you can jump off of a mountain. Okay, I'd say to that mountain, move and it will move. That's the feeling that I get. Mm -hmm. And so that keeps me going. And also, you need to be passionate about the people that you are serving. Now, don't get me wrong. The cause, yes, you need to have a certain degree of passion for the cause. But you cannot let that passion for the cause overweigh the passion for the people. Hear me when I say this. Because if you allow that to happen, Let's say, for example, you said, um, I'm going to help 10 people this month. But for some reason, you fell short and you only helped three persons this month. But because you were so focused and so passionate about that cause of helping 10 people and you fell short for whatever reason, because things life happens, you become disheartened because you did not help 10. But what about the two that you helped? focus on those two lives that you've changed. So that's why I say the passion for the people you are helping is foremost. You keep that on your heart. You keep it in your spirit. You keep those people in your heart and in your spirit. And it will bring you joy. It will bring you satisfaction that, yes, I didn't help 10, but my goodness, I helped two. Now, if you focus on the cause more than on the people you are helping, your vision is going to become obscured. Your goals are going to be mixed up and your mission will become impossible. If you hear what I'm saying, Mm. your mission will become impossible if you allow the cause to overshadow the passion for the people. So I try my best to focus on my passion for the little children, the young girls that I'm helping. Mm. Amen. You look into their eyes and you see that desperate need for someone to care just one. And then after some time with them and bringing them some joy, that smile in the eyes, that's what melts your hearts. That's what brings me joy and keeps me going, keep keeping me want to do this. The smiles and the thank you, the smiles in the eyes, the eyes lit up. That truth, Sharon, that truth. And so that's, that's, that's what keeps me going. Thank you for sharing, Sharon. That's what brings the joy to my heart. You know, right. it's tough. It's a tough, it's a tough thing doing philanthropic work. But you can't give up because they're depending on us. Mm. Those little babies are depending on people like myself, you, and all the other philanthropic people out there in the world. So please don't give up on them. Lighthouse Restoration Home has a GoFound Me page. Why are we doing this? Why am I promoting this here on my podcast? Because it's an easy avenue for you to share in any small way to help the souls, to help the little loving eyes and hearts and minds of the children of Port Charlotte, Florida, and beyond to step into another possibility where they can be educated, where they can be nurtured, where they can be nourished and fed, fed, fed daily. Go check out the link in the notes of this podcast, Rebel for a Spell, even if you got five dollars. (laughs) <laughs> five us dollars if you're listening from australia i know some of you are in the uk whatever you can if whatever you feel called to even if it is sharing sharing the go fund me page for lighthouse restoration home the phoenix rising campaign we have share it with your friends share it with the people in your community and your job every little bit goes a long way and thank you Thank you. Now we're back with Sharon Huggins, the founder of Lighthouse Restoration Home and the director and owner of Kids of the Future Family Home Child Care. Sharon, let's get juicy. Yes. (laughs) I'm looking at you, honey, and I'm seeing all the things. Let's talk about the little desires, the little treats that you give yourself. I see, um, you know, we, we nurture our financial goals or our career goals, but one of the little things that Sharon does for Sharon, I can tell you a girly girl. I see all the things. Tell us the little 
things that you love to do that little, some people may call them superficial or trivial, yeah. but I believe every little desire seasons you with the dignity to pursue that other thing, seasons you with yes. the worthiness to do that other thing. Tell, 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 Jaren. Well, first of all, some, you know, a lot of us, we do every other check beside a mental health check. We check our eyes, our hearts, everywhere. Mental health is real. It is needed to keep the rest of your body going. Realize where your head is. It's on the top. So it trickles down. So you have to get that mental health right. Check in on yourselves. If not daily, because I know life happens and sometimes 24 hours seems like it's not enough. And some of us may not have every day to check in on ourselves, but at least once a week, check in with yourself. See if you're frustrated. See if you're tired mentally, exhausted. You know, check in with yourself. Address these feelings that you're having for they are real and they can cause other effects in the body. So mental health, I check in. Beautiful. When I check in and I realize something is wrong, I do my meditation in terms of my praise dancing and my worship. Do what works for you. Find what works for you to rejuvenate your mental health. If you're not mentally sound, you are no good to yourself or to anyone else. And after that, of course, I go get my nails done. <laughs> you know, I love to, <laughs> I'm a girly girl, like Gwen said. And so I love to um, doll myself up. You may not love your nails, but whatever it is that you love for yourself, go get it done. You don't have to spend tons of money because I don't spend tons of money doing my hair. I do it myself. Okay. So you can learn to do that. Whatever it is, you can bake yourself a cupcake, whatever it is, take care of you, take care of you. You have to be sound. You have to be well. You can't be wounded and taking care of other people. You can't be lethargic and taking care of others. It will come through. They'll see it plain as day. Mm, so those are the little sure. things that we need to do. And again, you do what works for you. There's something that works for everyone. Checking in. I love what you said on the top. Checking in with yourself because we are so used to to doing what? Especially women. Let's tell the truth. Let's tell yeah. all the truth <laughs> all the way back to Eve. Or if you believe in yeah. that stuff too, to the creation of the universe, let's tell the truth. Women have uh, yeah. been anointed caretakers of the world. Yeah. And here's what many I say. Hats. What, what, many what, hats. Here's what I say. What about you, baby? What about yeah. you? It is deliciously, deliciously divine to choose yourself. Yeah. And I firmly believe this, Sharon. Some people may not agree, and you're welcome to your own opinions, but this That's is right. called the Rebel for a Spell podcast. Did you know that? <laughs> we are rebelling from, from the opinions of others. We are rebelling from the notions that we cannot be and feel and become who we decide. And many, exactly. people, many people would prefer for you. They mean well, but it's a human condition. They prefer for you to be who they want you to be. And you exactly. have the expectations of who they want you to be rather than for you to trust yourself and be who you, you are. Be you exactly. and when you like Sharon has said when Sharon has said when you step into your fullest fullest purest expression when you're taking care as Sharon said mental health checking in getting your nails and you're seasoning your soul with the dignity you become the ultimate gift to the world mm. to the world that's why I have I'm going to plug it here darlings the joy momentum workshop a gift from my soul to yours March 10th March 10th, the Joy Momentum Workshop, 3 p.m. Eastern. That's New York time. I know some of us are all across the world. If you are interested, invite your soul to join us for 90 minutes. We're breaking down all the nuggets that Sharon and I have been talking about, where you can cultivate that joy life. Whatever you said, Sharon just said it, your version of joy, your ultimate good life. We give you the tools, the practices, the Q&A sessions for you to get that one-on-one -on -one touch, for you to walk away knowing that, ah, inside of me, meaning you, That's right. you have the power to create the life you, that you love, you deserve. You need. You, you want to meet your forever love of your life like, like I have, my German delight? Hey. <laughs> it's available for you. You decide you want to make oodles and oodles of seven-figure, eight-figure money, honey. 
you want to have that wealth, W-E-A-L-T-H system, you go get it. That's exactly. what we teach you. We teach you the steps by steps, because like Sharon says, inside of you, and like I say, has the power, the divine power. If you feel the tingling, my love, join us March 10th. I'll leave the link in the notes to this podcast. You're welcome. Yes. Women cultivating their joy life. Sharon, tell us about those projects. You have so many projects in the works for 2024. Drop them all here. Before we get into that, when, if you will permit me, sure. I just wanted to um, talk a tad bit about your book, Inner Child Healing. This book, my goodness, it's powerful. I'm just going to read two small um, paragraphs from page 55. This is a surprise, you guys. This is not planned at all. Let me just say that, Sharon, because some people may say that we planned this, but no, Sharon, we did not. We did not. not planned. We she did feels not. called to. So thank you, Sharon. You're welcome. I see my lost memory as a form of mercy. My brain protected me until I was physically away from my parents. My brain locked those memories far enough away until I was more physically, emotionally, and spiritually mature. The memories of being sexually abused by my father were wreaking havoc on my life. At this stage of my suffering journey, I was learning a lot about myself. It's a journey where you learn. Unbeknownst to me, I was learning my whys. I did not know it, I did not know it at the time, but this period of truth discovery was the foundation of my healing journey. Ladies, young ladies, women, it's a journey. We all go through something. Don't beat yourself up and try to figure it out overnight. What you first must do, as Wen said in this powerful book, discover that truth. Don't keep pushing it away. Face it. Deal with it and allow it to take you on your healing journey. Powerful. I would suggest you get this. Whatever trauma you've been through, this, you getting this book is your first step to your healing process. Wow. I'm, I'm, I'm actually holding back tears right now. Sharon, thank you so much. Thank you so much again, you my love. That welcome. was not... I did not ask Sharon to plug my book. None of no, that. She did not. She felt she led. And I'm so. She did not. Ah, so grateful that she, the book has touched and moved Sharon to deliver this message to you across the globe today. To all the souls that have bought the book, who have written in, who have shared texts, private texts, private messages, emails. Thank you for inviting yourself to the destination of your healing. You were born worthy. Always, always always worthy just from being yourself. And as Sharon just said, my loves, my loves, my loves, my loves, my loves. When you discover that you have the power to feel, hmm. to feel the pain, the thing that you think you fear most, and yes. to move through that tunnel of fear, move through it and heal. Oh, my yes. loves, my loves, that delivery, that salvation, that joy, that shimmery, floaty, full, free feeling is always available yep. to you. Right, Sharon? Yep. Oh, it is. Loves. Thank it you, is. Sharon, for saying all the things about and the book. I when the reason why I, I spoke about this book as well, because... There are many different avenues to healing. I don't want women to think that they have to go to some expensive counseling or anything. This right here is a start. Thank you. There's different ways of healing. It could be reading this book. Some may definitely have to go to see a therapist. Mm. Whatever it takes for you, do it. Thank you, Sharon. I want that's you why to be well. Thank you. And that's what we were, we were born we are naturally made to feel joyful, naturally made yes. to feel happy, naturally made to feel supported by the thoughts and the feelings and the emotions that are living inside of us. And that's why in my Definitely. practice, Sharon, in my intuitive healing coaching program and the work that I do every day, all day, every day, yes. I have many different, many different 
let's call them appetizers, entrees, and full course <laughs> meals for people, honey. Because as you just said, your sovereign right to feel and to flow is yours. So I have meditations. I have the private one-on-one three-month coaching for deeper healing. I have the joy retreat, one day event. I have all these different avenues, the workshop that's coming up because some of us just need the little teasers, the intro, yes, like the book yes. or the meditations, the meditations that I have curated, especially for you. And Sharon mentioned meditation for herself as well. Meditation oh, yeah. is a powerful way for you to, I call it in my practice, in my coaching method, for you to sit, stay, and to listen yeah. to Y O U. Inside of you is a divine truth. Inside yes. of you is a deep, 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 deep knowing. And some of us allow ourselves to be distracted by the desperate housewives or whatever these shows are called and get distracted <laughs> and get that juicy, ooey, um, love, yes. pop and ice cream. I was addicted to ice cream, honey. Hell to the yes during my trauma healing. But you know what some one of my clients said the other day? The prescription medication that she used to help her anxiety wow. ultimately taught her to come back home to her lighthouse within. And we're talking right. to Sharon, right. the founder of Lighthouse Restoration Home Inc. You know about the GoFundMe page. Go found me. Yes. If you're in Australia and you only got a dollar, baby, drop it in the bucket. If you're in Let America, you, you got one dollar, drop it in the bucket. It doesn't matter. Sharon is doing the work that she's been called to, to help the women. She talked about them earlier in Port Charlotte. Port Charlotte, a beautiful city in Florida. Help them support their children, their minds. Give yes. them that education, etiquette. Give them all the things. Sharon, tell us about the project, when they're happening, where they're happening, and all yes. the good stuff that you are delivering to the souls. Okay. Now, like I said, it's been a lot of stumbling blocks in my journey as um, a nonprofit president. And so I really had to refocus, re-energize myself, and now I'm revitalized. So for 2024, under the campaign Raising Community Champions, our theme for 2024 is Phoenix Rising. Phoenix rising resonated with me because you know a phoenix, once it rises, it's a powerful being. Powerful. Come on, Sharon. Come on. Let's come on, do it. And power it. Up and up and up and up and up and up. Just soaring. Just soaring. Yeah, no, just soaring. And so we want to empower our women for excellence. I know that sounds like a cliche term, but for me, there's lots of um, nonprofits out there, and I commend the work that they are doing because without them, our communities would be lost. But I'm taking a slightly different approach for the healing and well-being and sustainability of our young children, our young girls, and our women, and our young ladies. My ultimate goal is to have a facility, a house, where women that has been abused sexually, physically, emotionally, unhoused women with their children, and women that has been released from incarceration for, you know, petty crimes, where they can come and where we find the root of the problem, the root of the issue that caused them to be in the place that they landed whether it be in jail, in an abusive relationship, sexually abused, and so forth. Because if we don't find the root of these things, how do they heal and move forward? We are just covering up that wound, and that's not what we are about at Lighthouse. We are here to raise community champions. We don't want to rise someone up with just covering the wound and then have them crash. That's not the aim. The aim is to help them become self-sustainable, to move from transitional homes into permanent housing, whether it be it rental, stable rental, or owning their own home, and being community champions, giving back to their community. And so with all of that said, we have several programs this year, which I'm so excited about. And I'm focusing so much on my little girls and my young ladies. Yes, on the women as well. But we have to get them when they are young so that they grow up to become productive, self-sufficient, powerful, joyful women. So we're not leaving the women out, but we are 
grabbing our girls early. And what's the age group of this project you're about From to tell 10, me? T- 10 years old, 10 oh, to 19. Wow. Beautiful, 10 to but 19. We are, aiming, we are aiming for the ones above that, but we are focusing on the 10 to 19 year old. Now, one of the, the programs that's near and dear to my heart is Square Table Basics. That one is later down in the year, but it's so near and dear to my heart, I thought I'll talk about it first. Square Table Basics is an etiquette workshop that we are putting together here at Lighthouse for 15 to 20 young ladies. Within that workshop, we are going to be teaching them. It's a six-week workshop, and it's in the month of October. And we deliberately chose the month of October because it's the International Girl Child's Month. And so we want to celebrate them. We want to lift them up. We want to strengthen them. And so in that um, Square Table Basics workshop, it's an etiquette workshop and a skills training workshop for our young ladies. They're going to learn table etiquette, dining etiquette, social greeting skills etiquette. And believe it or not, a big part is tech etiquette. A lot of our young ladies get themselves in trouble on the internet because they really don't know how to navigate. And so that's one of the things we are going to be um, helping them with. For the older young ladies, interview skills and also self-love is important. You Mm. cannot accomplish anything if you don't love yourself. I don't care how hard you try. So we want to give them those tools. And um, once they've completed the um, six-week course, we have a real dining experience already set up for these girls at Mm -hmm. Chaz 51. Thank you to Miss Dorothy and Mr. Charles of Chaz 51 Restaurant in Venice, Florida. You guys are great. You guys rock. Thank you very much. And so we just want to give these girls a different side of what they've been going through. So that project is near and dear to my heart. I love the then, diversity of what you're offering, if I may add this. Say the name of the program again, slowly for the listeners out there, Sharon. It's um, Square Table Basics. Square Table Basics. Etiquette, social skills for the older girls, uh, interview, interview skills, skills, tech skills. skills. So it's 360. And Sharon is imparting all her wisdom and all her understanding of how the world really works in real time for these ladies as they go through their life. I think that is such an innovative, deeply thoughtful and brilliant way to help the women almost be entering to different stages of their life because they're going through puberty. They're all at different stages. They're all going to be almost being mentored by the other girls who are older, the 10 year old. old. It's beautiful. That sense of intimate community. Bravo. Tell us about the next one. Well, before I get into the next one, I also would like to thank Wen. She is an inspiration. Yes. (laughs) She's an, such an inspiration with all the work that she's doing out there as well to help our women because it's women, we have to rise together because if we don't, we are going to fall divided. So we have to rise together. We have to pull each other up. Come on, ladies. We are counting on you. Up and up and up and up and up only. All the way up. All the way up. Let's tell the truth. I didn't ask you to say any of this. Let's put it all out there. This is all surprising to me, listeners. Sharon is here speaking her truth. Listen, we have to celebrate our women out there. We can't be selfish. I can't just have the spotlight on me. I I can't do this alone. So Mm -hmm. I have to put the spotlight on other women. And Corinne Shea Phipps, oh my God, Mm -hmm. another powerhouse of a woman out there. Shout out to you, Corinne. Shout out to Corinne. Keep doing the work you are doing, sweetheart. You know, and I also want to thank um, Kia of Port Charlotte, Mr. Kevin West. Kia of Port Charlotte. Kia of Port Charlotte. Mm -hmm. Mr. Kevin West and Courtney Lambright and all the staff there at Kia. They are one of our sponsors for, for one of our programs, the Phoenix Rising theme. And they're one of the sponsors for the Square Table Basics. We thank you guys. We love and thank you. you. We thanking you. everyone who I've been plugging Sharon's Lighthouse Restoration home for a little while on my social media. Anybody who even allows themselves to receive this podcast today. You may not be able to process all the fantastic, mind-blowing, 
stuff that Sharon is doing, but you may be seeded by an idea for yourself, for your community, whatever it may be. So we are all a Sharon say, we are all interconnected. One soul helps the other. You hold a key to our collective healing, our collective joy. Sharon is no more righteous and when is no more righteous or no more worthy than the next woman who's sleeping on the highway or whatever. We are all here collectively helping each other remember the dignity Amen. of feeling and believing yeah. that we are worthy. So please, yes. please know that every little, every little gift, every little prayer, let's say that, yes. every little thing that you do helps all of us collectively move forward. And remember, yes. in giving your time, your energy, your energy, your energy, your prayers, it doesn't matter who knows about it or who doesn't know about it. If you want to, if you feel called to donate to Sharon's cause, Lighthouse Restoration Home, Go ahead and do it anonymously. There is no, oh, look at me, I, I donated and she didn't donate. It's not about that, my love. Sharon put herself, her ego out of the way so that she, instead of making the oodles of money being Miss Stockbroker, she put that out of the way and stepped into a calling of a purpose of a cause that's higher than her. That's higher than her. Sharon, tell us about the rest of the projects because they're is also good. Yes, there is also emotional restoration. Mm. I mean, sometimes our emotions need CPR. Mm. We are so down, we are so depressed, and we don't know why. As women, more so our young ladies, sometimes as women we feel so lost with so much cares of the world and it feels like the whole world is crashing. And could you imagine those young ladies, those young girls? They don't even know how to process their emotion. It's just all over the place. They don't know what they're feeling. And so we have this weekend that we are planning to um, take these young ladies to um, a theme park where we can work on those emotions, revitalize those emotions, resuscitate those emotions, help them understand what they're feeling and why they're feeling it. And what better way to do this than to take them away from their normal environment. Mm. And so every little girl and little boy, but this is about our young ladies, they love theme parks. What a better way to, you know, revitalize that emotion, resuscitate that emotion. One of the, the parts in the park that I really want to, make sure that they visit is the animal experience or dolphin experience. I say that because animals do not judge human beings. Mm. We want them in a judge-free zone where they can let down their hair, feel free to cry if they want to, feel free to scream if they want to, laugh all day if they want to, <laughs> jump, hop, skip, whatever it is they want to do. There is no judgment. There is no forcing them to speak about a certain topic. If they feel like speaking, whatever they feel like speaking on, that's what the topic will be. It's all about re-energizing them and their emotional resuscitation. Oh, I love this. This is what I heard, ladies and gentlemen. Men, I know you're listening. A lot of fellows follow the podcast because you got daughters, honey. You, you, you are husband. We love men. Sharon loves her husband. They've been married for 20,000 million years, okay? So my loves, let me tell you this. What Sharon is doing in the background of all this thing is Sharon has figured out a way, a figured out a physical way to bring the proximity of joy if you're looking at YouTube at Rebel for a Spell, you see my hands closer to bring those kids, those minds in the environment of joy, to feel the energy of it, to feel the physicality and the freedom of it by taking them out into the adventure of love, into the adventure of their fullest, purest expressions. And I think that is so ingenious, my love, so ingenious. Sharon, in her mind, there's a level of creativity, creativity, deep thought that has gone into her understanding of the psychology, of the makeup, of just the needs that kids have, the wants. Kids want to be kids, right? Kids want to be kids. And she's offering a freedom. This is why, even in my, the moment I began my practice, and it's full disclosure here, in my shop, Shopify, shop at Rebel for a Spell, Shopify, I have journals, I have mugs, I have all these things. And the portions of those sales go to Sharon's Lighthouse Restoration. Thank in my coaching, so portion of my coaching goes to Sharon Restoration, Lighthouse Restoration, the only 
the only for now organization that I sponsor and dedicated to helping. Why? Because it's so, so akin to the songs of my heart, the work that Sharon does. So if you are called to, if you are called to feel led to, please go visit Sharon's GoFundMe page, Lighthouse Restoration Home. I'm dropping all the links in the bottom. You can find her on Facebook. You can find Sharon through me, me through Sharon at rebelforaspell.com. You ain't gonna excuse. <laughs> it's in the notes to this podcast. Sharon, any other projects you want to tell us about yes. before we close out? Yes. We are working also on um, CARES. It's confident, articulate, revitalizing, energetic stars. Mm. And that is where we um, provide hygiene products for our young ladies. And we don't just drop a basket of hygiene products and say, here, take this. We teach them why you need to use this, how you need to use it, and what benefits it brings to your body and to your environment. So it's an all-inclusive where we help them take care, hence the word cares, take care of themselves. And in taking care of yourself, you'll be able to take care of others. So that's the message we want to bring with cares. Another one we have is Hope not deferred. Now we know a lot say of our that young again. ladies. Let's say that hope, again, Sharon. Hope not deferred. Not deferred. Hope no. H O P E not, not deferred. D E F E R R E D. We ain't yes. waiting for hope to come along the no. way, baby. We're no. bringing it into the present future now. Hope yes. not deferred. Not Tell deferred. us about that's powerful. Now we know that. There's lots of young ladies and young men. Please don't get me wrong. We are coming with a chapter near you soon. We just have to get our ladies ready. Um, We have these young ladies that, I mean, they've been beaten down at such a young age. They feel like there is no hope. So we're not deferring that hope any longer. They are going to shoot for the stars and beyond. Lighthouse is there for that. We are going to bridge that gap and they're going to walk over that bridge into their stardom, whatever that looks like for them. So we want our young ladies to not only go to college because there's scholarships out there for them to go, athletic scholarships, all kinds of scholarships, you know, first generation going to college scholarships. And so we know they can get there, but when they get there, they need some tools to work with. They need to have a refrigerator. They need to have textbooks. They need to have all that other stuff. While the resources does not allow us to give full scholarships for tuition, but we can do whatever little we can. And so for the girls here in 2024, well-deserved girls, that is, of course, we are going to channel the school's assistance with this to pinpoint those young ladies. We want to offer them a $200 certificate to at least Mm. 10, 20 ladies so they can purchase a refrigerator, textbooks, whatever the tools they need to function while they are going off to college. We don't want them to feel less than. Mm. We want them to be able to function at their maximum and be magnanimous stars. We know they can do it. They just need the tools to do it. And they need the village behind them. And Lighthouse is that village. Rebel for a spell is that village. And you out there listening, you are a provider of that village. Please know that you are all the energy that we put forth, the belief, the collective belief, the community of hope that we are nurturing here matters. And Sharon is not sitting on the sidelines. Let's talk for a moment about Sharon as we begin to close out this delicious podcast with Sharon Huggins, the gorgeous soul. Sharon is immersing herself into understanding deeply the community and the minds that she's serving. She's down in up in short Port Charlotte, pounding the pavement, talking to all the people and even some of the folks that wish Sharon would go away from in front of their ass, baby. They are walking her through the door, even while she's saying, hi, my name is Sharon. And none of that is stopping her because she believes in her mission that is bigger than her. She sees the eyes of the children. She look at what Sharon just walked us through from 10 years and up and up and up and up and up and up, seeding joy, seeding expectations of what they should ask for, call for and demand in their life. Confident expectations he's building in the little minds to show up when they eventually become 21 and say, listen, I'm here for this job. I need $100,000. And that's what it is because I am worthy of it and yes. not stepping down. She's helping these children. Let's call the thing. 
to create standards of worthiness inside themselves. And you know what Jaron is witnessing? And I have too. And I have too. And so maybe you. These children turn around and teach. Yeah. They teach their mother, their cousins, their little dogs, their standards of being. Yes. Their standards of being. Sharon is doing powerful work. Sharon is doing, let's call the thing the thing. Brave, gutsy, take all your full badassness work. Sharon has two machetes in her hand, honey, and she's paving the pavement over here for that, and she's yeah. paving the pavement yeah. over here for that. And you, my love, are invited to do the yeah. same thing in your life. In your life, it begins with you. It begins with here, inside here, inside here, your heart. And if you are called to, as I was called to yesterday when Sharon and I were prepping for this interview, I was called to donate one fully paid tuition for the workshop that's coming up, the Joy Momentum Workshop, to one of the women, you Sharon. You're you. welcome, my love, that Sharon is interacting with and engaging with and helping fully pay tuition for that 90 minute workshop with lifetime access to the modules, to the workbook, to the full course that we're going to be executing on March 10th to help them come home to their joy in life, to help them come home even in the days, 10 years from now, five years from now, five weeks from now, where they need that loving, where they need to see other women who look like them, who speak like them, who may not yes. even look like them or speak like them and maybe have, a, have met an aspirational goal or financial goal that they are hoping to achieve so they can keep going up and up and up oh, and up. Yes. We're here for that, my love. So if you are called to, I'm repeating this many times on this podcast, so you got to hear it. Sometimes we got to hear it time and time again to feel it. Yes. How within you, even if it's $1, okay? <laughs> $1, you yen. appreciate it. You Thank is, you. If you have certain skills and you'd rather donate your skills and you'd like to offer that yes. to Sharon, she's always yes. looking for coaches. I'm also helping Sharon in different different projects she's working on, donating my time. We are all can yes. help in so many ways. You want to volunteer when she has her events? Raise your hand. You can do stuff virtually and ship it to Sharon, however you guys work it out. So Lighthouse Restoration Home. Sharon Huggins, last question for you, Doug. Yes. What is your, tell the whole truth now, all of it, don't be polite, baby, because I believe we are worthy of whatever we say we want. We want what we want because we want what we want. And what we want right. is the desire that has been planted in our soul, deposited in our souls of who to we want to be. To come, to come alive. alive. Sometimes we are too polite. Sometimes we are too polite. Sometimes we are too judgy judgmental when it comes to the things that we want. What is Sharon's living, living legacy, living legacy? Before I, 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 I get into that, I just wanted to mention real quickly, if you sure. permit me, one other special um, project. It's um, sun, the Sunrise Project, where during the months of June and July, where we know that school is closed and lots of children depend on the breakfast and school lunch. But well, we're going to fill that gap Lighthouse well um, in June and July. It's breakfast and lunch for all those two months for mm -hmm. all the children that needs this. We're not saying just girls, all the children that need this will benefit. And all of these um, events will be on the Facebook page, Lighthouse Restoration Homes Inc. With the dates, we welcome all the donations, the prayers. We thank you. We love you. The GoFundMe participants, we thank you. Whatever capacity, we welcome it. We Sharon thank you. is. Thank you, Sharon, for saying that. Did you hear that, my loves? Sharon is nourishing bodies, minds, hearts, and futures and possibilities. She's doing all the work. That's why on her GoFundMe page, the goal right now is $550,000. Let's tell the truth. Money is a resource that helps Sharon, helps you to help others to become more than you can possibly do on your own. And okay. that's why we're asking for the collective work. And Sharon is breaking down for you the actual places and, and projects where her work and where your funds are going towards. This is a year-long 
year-long endeavor, year-long endeavor in spring and summer and fall, honey. So please know this is not a one-stop shop where she's just buying the, the hygiene products like she said and giving to the kids. She's doing the work of actually training them, training them. As Sharon was saying that, I remember when I first menstruated, Nobody showed me and explained. I, I, let me tell you, well, that's another story, honey. That's like a, another story. It's like, oh, you're having your period. Good luck. Goodbye. Sharon's not doing that. It's compassionate and loving, listening and hearing and caring. If you are moved to donate, Sharon's GoFundMe page, Lighthouse Restoration. On my Instagram, Rebel for a spell, R-E-B-E-L for a spell, the same name as this podcast. I have a donation link there for Sharon's Lighthouse Restoration page. My loves, if you're called to, you can. Sharon, tell us the ding. What is your living legacy? Yes. Um, my living legacy is to have several lighthouses, not just for women, but like I promised the fellas, we're coming to get you. We want to have a lighthouse restoration home for men because believe it or not, lots of men are single parents too. Men are abused emotionally, physically, and sexually as well. But my first love is women. I'm a woman. So charity begins at home. You know, I have to start where my home is. I'm a woman. And so fellas, we are coming to get you. So that's one thing. I want lighthouse to spread light, not just in my community, Southwest Florida, but regionally and internationally. It may not be called Lighthouse there. It may not be Sharon setting up that particular institution, but I want people to be inspired to bring Lighthouse wherever in the world. So that's one of my um, living legacies. Another is for all of the children, all of the time to be happy. When we look at them, we will see that smile in their eyes because believe it or not, the eyes tell a lot. It's the gateway to the soul. And if there's a smile in their eyes, they are joyful and they're happy and they're not hurting. So we want to eliminate that hurt that our children go through. They don't deserve that. So team up with us to make that a living legacy for yourself, that these little boys, these little girls, which will be our future women and young men one day. And so a world is in their hands. So we have to groom them. We have to love on them and nurture them and see that smile in their eyes. Join us to bring that smile to their eyes. And tears, honey. That's something yeah. that just and whipped tears. out my napkin. And tears, tears yeah. I'm, I'm a crybaby. <laughs> I tell you, I'm a crybaby. So. Children tug at our hearts, tug at our yeah. hearts. And that's why I wrote my book, too, In a Child's Healing. Because even as an adult, my loves, as we close out, even as an adult, you, inside of you, when you're feeling hurt, when you're feeling unheard, when you're feeling unseen or even when you're feeling playful joyful you want to twirl in that yes. in that car when you're doing a, a twirl in your hold a sac like i do <laughs> or you want to sing in the in the supermarket whatever we are yes, all right. children inside and sometimes our emotions come out and are expressed in our childhood level of maturity and that's why we yeah. are all children ultimately and the work sharon yes, is yeah. doing is so important to all of us, the work that you made doing in your own philanthropic endeavor, or even in your regular, regular, regular life, you give a smile to someone in, in the in the supermarket. Bravo! You're passing love along, passing love along, my loves. It's not the big, big things that we do. It's the repeatable, gentle, compassionate, loving that we gift ourselves right. and we pass on to the other soul that inspires the other person and the other person. It's all a cascade of joy, cascade of joy. And we're here for it all, Sharon, yes. Sharon Huggins, and all the work you're doing. And her, her team is small and tight, but she's still doing all these things, knowing and believing that she has been called to deliver this work, called yes. to inspire, called to help the little minds, the little hearts in her community and beyond. My loves, if you're called to, please go to the GoFundMe page. Fund me page of Lighthouse Restoration Home. Sharon is the first of many powerful women. We will be spotlighting here on Rebel for a Spell all year and beyond because there's so many of us doing little things to lift us all up. But we are, as women, I don't hear no man say, let me not tell anybody that I'm doing this thing. Men are loud and proud, baby. 
Someone, <laughs> let's correct that. It's loud and proud. So we have got to be loud and proud and cheer. If this right. podcast has touched your spirit, share it. Share it, my love. Follow that intuitive nudge. Share it on your Facebook. Share it on your Instagram. Share it on your TikTok. Share it in your email. Even yes. that, that is a message of love. That is a message of hope. Sharon, any last words as we close out? Yes. Um, also, we are 501c3. So we have an EIN number and any monetary donations can be claimed on your taxes. Also, we don't just want your money. We want you to become involved in wherever you want to be involved in any nonprofit organization. It doesn't have to be Lighthouse. It doesn't have to be Rebel for a Spell. But any organization that you feel that your talents matches, go out there, find out what they're needing. It can be as much as printing flyers. It can be volunteering an hour. It can be just speaking to this young lady and holding her hand for a minute and letting that person know, I love you. Yes, we need the money because without the money, we all know it. We can't do anything in the world, but that's not what we are about. We need your love, your prayers, your support. We need your help in volunteering, whatever that looks like for you. Sharon, I'm called to ask this last question. Spirit said, ask Sharon this. Let's go deep, my loves. Let's go all the way deep. As a little girl, and I've known you for a long time, as a little girl growing up, and I'm taking my time because I'm getting all the activations of love, of murmuring, remembering. As a little girl growing up in the island, in the Caribbean Sea on one side, the Atlantic Ocean Atlantic on the other. <laughs> side. The little girl growing up, then moving forward now in the woman you are, in the powerhouse woman you are. Did you imagine this was your purpose? Did you have any inclination that you could be led? Did you feel anything back then if you can go all the way back yes. to that little girl and the woman you know, the arch, the explosion that is Sharon? Did you have any inclination of your destiny that you have created? Well, I wouldn't say when I was a child that I had any inclination, but what I will say is this. I was inherently born to do this. I say this because my grandmother, she had it in her genes. I mean, this woman was a giver. May her soul rest in peace. And 13 of us lived in a tiny home on Pond Road, 13. We slept head to feet, okay? (laughs) So we grew up humble. Were we poverty stricken? By no means. Did we have oodles and noodles of money? No, but we had enough. We were contented, we were happy. Those were the most of joyous years of my childhood that I can remember when the 13 of us lived in that house. We shared everything. We fussed, we fight, we loved, we we did it hard, but we ultimately will root for each other because if anybody out, even though we would just have a fight between ourselves, me and my cousins, sisters, brothers, anybody outside this family step to you, we all will step in. We all will be ready. So we had that love. And so I cherish those years. And when I said I was inherently born to do this, it's in my genes, my maternal grandmother. We had family overseas and whenever they would send a barrel, she would split those big bags of rice into Ziploc bags and all the mac and cheese and everything else. And we would go around the neighborhood just delivering these care packages. We didn't have a lot. And I remember my grandfather also on my mom's side, my pater- my, my maternal okay. grandfather. Yes. He, um, to this day, I make the sorrow just like he taught me how to do it. He would make this sorrow. And the black cake, believe it or not, my grandfather. And I make it today. I haven't deviated from his recipe, neither from the sorrel nor the black cake. And that's a fruit cake, and we put black coloring in it, and it's yummy, 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 yummy. And every Christmas, we didn't have money to give gifts to our neighbors. Him, myself, and my sister, we would bottle that sorrel drink, we would package that black cake, and we would go around and we would give those out. So it's been in me. Could I have identified at that time that it will bring me to this? No but I know I was born for it. And so when my heart and my soul became so restless at corporate America and then having my 
my sister in my ear speaking positively to me, telling me my destiny is tied to my business. It all came full, full force, full fruition, and Lighthouse was born. So don't give up on your childhood journey. Don't give up on your childhood memories. It can be the very thing that you've been meant to do with your life. Mm. nothing is wasted the pain is not wasted the tears aren't wasted the setbacks aren't wasted it's a preparation for your destiny take a journey back into all those things that you went through and it will bring you to where you should be today let's land it there i felt every single word that sharon said and i hope you felt it as well my loves i leave you with this thank you sharon Thank you, Wayne. Heart, soul, time, energy, and truth into our souls and the minds of the people who may hear this podcast after you and I have transformed into another version of ourselves, our physical selves. My love, listen to this. Sharon just said it so eloquently. You make sense. The parts of you, your childhood, that you think, the parts of you on your job, people are being the way they are, they're disrespecting, all of that, all of that is your bridge, your pathway, your gateway to coming home to saying, you make sense. Everything is always working out for you. You may not see it, you may not feel it, you may feel anger to this person, that person, but allow yourself to feel all that you are feeling because that is your deliverance into a new space. That is your exploration into yourself. You becoming intimately, intimately fine-tuned, tuned, attuned to your spirit. Sharon, as a little girl growing up in the island of St. Kitts, where I am from as well, Look at this 365 degree, what she's doing now. Everything is always working out for you. And Lighthouse Restoration Home is working out for many women, many girls in Port Charlotte, Florida, and beyond. Go donate, go fund me. The links are going to be here in the show notes. You ain't got no excuse, baby. Share this podcast with your people. Even that alone. Even that share alone is helping somebody else know that they are not alone. And so the women who may actually need Sharon help, the girls who may need the etiquette courses, the hygiene products can go and find Lighthouse Restoration. Liberation is not a one-way street, my love. Liberation, freedom and love and joy is not a one-way street. So please know that every little bit counts. We're leaving it here. Rebel for the Spell podcast has been honored with Sharon Huggins and you for coming in and being seasoned by the possibilities of your greatness, by coming in and coming into a home of peace within you where you get the privilege of being your fullest self, of living life on your terms. And we are going... Up and up and up and up and up 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 and 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 up